So again, my name is Steve Leitis. Uh, the company is Nuts About Nets, and we develop uh, software, diagnostic software, to troubleshoot wireless networks. Uh, we're also the primary distributor for uh, ARF Explorer handheld spectrum analyzers. I don't know how many of you are familiar with those, but they're pretty popular these days. And um, so our focus, so we're, again, we're a software company, and our focus is primarily Wi-Fi. And also we play an important role. We, we create software for wireless pro audio field. And it turns out that in wireless pro audio, what I mean, these are people, these are ARF engineers, sound engineers, they set up you know, dozens of uh, transmitters for a live event. And they also, and each transmitter has to be assigned a frequency or a channel. And they, it turns out that they run into the same problems that we run into, uh, similar problems we run into uh, in setting up a Wi-Fi network. So it's, it's a good space for us. And um, so as a company, our goals are in, in Wi-Fi is to compute the best channel. And what that often means is the, is the channel that has the potential for the most throughput. And in the wireless pro audio field, uh, we, the software performs something called intermodulation analysis, which is important when you do frequency coordination, when you have dozens of transmitters and you have to make, you have to, each one has to have a separate frequency and you want to make sure that they don't clobber one another. Um, so, uh, so in this talk, what I wanted to tell you about is, is a new diagnostic tool that we released last summer. It's called Wi-Fi Metrics. It is, um, it is a, it uses a dual band a Wi-Fi chip, and it performs two important features. One of them is called AirHorn, and um, AirHorn is is a packet injector, um, or you can also think of it as as a signal generator. It's a source of RF, and the other important feature is um, is Wi-Fi probe, and Wi-Fi probe uh, is is more interesting to me. Wi-Fi Probe implements a new metric that allows you to, to sort of to determine the quality of a channel. And, um, and in the course of doing that, we can compute the best channel. And I'll be, uh, in a moment, I'll be a little bit more clear what I mean by that. And so Wi-Fi Metrics, it's, it's a handheld diagnostic tool. It doesn't require associating with an access point. It can be used standalone. And the, the way that I describe it to people is it, it basically sees the world through the eyes of an 802.11 device. It's not a spectrum analyzer. It's not a Wi-Fi scanner. It's a Wi-Fi chip that we've added some diagnostic software so that it can do diagnostics. It, it'll see the world and do di diagnostics a way that an access point would. Um, okay, so um, over the course of listening to the talks the last couple of days, I, I come from a different world. I'm a software developer, but I realize that, that most of you guys here are, are enterprise installers. So I was trying to think about how do I, how do I put Wi-Fi metrics in a context so that it would make it easier for you to consider whether Wi-Fi metrics would fit in your toolbox. And so one of the things I I just want to be clear about like what Wi-Fi metrics is and what it's not. So Wi-Fi metrics, it's not, um, it's not an enterprise tool. It's not a tool that you would use when you're designing a Wi-Fi installation. And it also, it doesn't implement any sophisticated software that you can do, you know, you can, you know, compute wave propagation or power requirements or network analysis or stuff like that. Um, but what Wi-Fi Metrics is, it's a tool that we use to troubleshoot Wi-Fi net, uh, wi networks. It's used for testing. Um, even though it's not an enterprise tool, it can be used to gather information in, in preparation for an enterprise installation. Um, it's simple to use and also 
importantly, it's very low cost. And it implement, again, it implements these two main features, air horn, which is a channel signal generator, and Wi-Fi probe, that we refer to it as a channel analyzer, that it actually measures, there's a metric called, um, the metric is percent available transmit time, and it can compute that metric for each channel. And that metric reflects the quality of a channel. So we're not really trying, we're not determining, you know, how good the hardware is. We want to know the, re the relative quality of each channel and to actually perhaps like rank each channel so you know what is the best. So if you have a choice of which channel to use, you have, you have another data point that you can use in determining you know, which channel you want to configure the access point for. Um, so a number of years ago, um, a fellow named Devin Aiken coined um, an expression that we stole. Uh, and he, his, his expression was, wouldn't it be nice if there were tools that use the infrastructure to troubleshoot the infrastructure? So whenever I talk about Wi-Fi metrics, I, I like using, I think that's, that's a good description. It's, it's, um, it, it, um, it's an 802.11 device that's used to troubleshoot 802.11 networks. Um, and what I, I often like using the, re referring to the OSI model, when I think about, uh, it, it helps me think about how different tools fit into the scheme of troubleshooting. And in particular, like I, I really love RF spectrum analyzers. I use them a lot, we sell them. Um, but our spectrum analysis operates at layer one. And, and the point of this slide is to emphasize that in the OSI model, um, that, that each layer is clueless about the layer above it. So as, as great as our spectrum analysis is and how we all use it, actually when you, when you take that data and you're trying to make decisions about what's the best channel, you really sort of, unless you're intimately familiar with the 802.11 standard, you're really just guessing. And, and even if you guess right, it's hard to quantify, even if you guess that one channel is better than another, it's hard to quantify how much better and whether it's actually worth switching to another channel. And just to contrast that with Wi-Fi metrics, it's a, it's a layer two device because it actually uses an 802.11 chip to do the diagnostics. And so that's the important distinction. We're using an 802.11 device to, to obtain a metric about 802.11. We're not using spec spectrum analysis to deduce what we think might be going on at the layer above it. And um, so here's an example. Like suppose, so the, this upper chart is a spectrum trace. It's an artificial one, but so I have like, I have three patterns. I have like three medium height peaks over channel one, uh, a broad lower peak over channel six, and a tall narrow peak over channel 11. So suppose if you were given an exam, like how many, how many wh wh who, who would say channel one is the best channel? Channel six, channel 11. Who doesn't care because you're using five gigahertz? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so the point is that this is sort of a rhetorical question because there really, I mean, nobody, it's, it's, hard, it's basically impossible to tell which would, which would be the best channel. But, um, and that's because, we're, that's because it's, it's, an, it's a spectrum trace. It's collecting data from layer one. And to contrast that again, uh, Wi-Fi Pro, the way that we display the data in the device is that each, it traverses every channel and it actually computes a metric that can then be used to determine which is the best channel um, because it's a layer two device. Um, a little bit more about Wi-Fi probe, uh, the Wi-Fi probe feature. So again, Wi-Fi, it's a standalone device. It does not associate with an access point. Uh, it performs what we call channel analysis using IMMI technology. IMMI stands for Indirect Measurement of Microwave Interference. It's a patented technology that uses um, a dual band Wi-Fi chip. 
And the technology relies on CCA. Uh, the the Wi-Fi Pro feature traverses each channel and it computes the metric percent available transmit time for each channel. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's based on CCA. Uh, the air horn feature, uh, air horn, again, it's a packet injector signal generator. It operates in three modes. Uh, the charts up here show the pattern uh, that you can generate in the three modes. I've listed some of the, the applications, um, testing antennas, aligning directional antennas, locating dead spots. You can also use it to create trouble for your friends, but I know nobody here would use it for that purpose. Um, and finally, uh, two new features that we're adding. Uh, one is Wi-Fi throughput, testing Wi-Fi throughput, and the other one is DFS testing with Wi-Fi throughput. The way this is used is the Wi-Fi metrics, metrics device can be configured to be an access point, and so you would set it close to um, where, where your access point is or where you imagine it's going to be. And then we have a smartphone app that, uh, that associates with the access point and it displays a graphic and you, the way you set it up is that either, either the access point transmits and the smartphone receives or, or the other way around. And basically it's like iPerf. And so what you do, you walk around and the expectation is that um, is that, that the throughput for the two devices sh should closely track with one another, unless maybe you're walking around and you, and you, you walk into an area where there's RF interference or there's, there's a dead spot, and then the two, the two charts would begin to, di would begin to diverge. Um, and the other feature is sort of is very interesting, it's new to us. Uh, we're adding another radio for DFS testing. And the idea is that this would allow users to, to confirm whether the access point that they've installed um, really jump, that it, or this radio, what it'll do, it'll, it'll simulate a radar signal. And, and the way that it would be used is, is that it would, you want to see if it triggers the access point to jump from a DFS channel to another channel. And I'm over. But, so I think I'll end it there. Thank you. Uh, GT, well, on your way up? There he is. So, on, on GT's way up.